Right, so Labour's election campaign banks in no small part to their leader Keir Starmer's racist attacks on Bangladesh and Bengali communities is still suffering significant fallout from that. And when the boss man still can't seem to say the words, I'm sorry about that, just expressions of regret and no intent to cause harm, it just doesn't cut it. And when Starmer's literal words were, people from Bangladesh are not being removed, he very much has something to apologise for. But Keir Starmer never says sorry, never takes responsibility. And when the next screw up inevitably comes once he's in power, but this isn't the first time he's failed to say sorry, it won't be the last either. So look out for it going forwards, because that lack of an apology, that lack of ever issuing one, that horrendous character flaw that Starmer has, as well as the vile nonsense about Bengalis he inferred, that they shouldn't be here, that for some reason they don't seem to have a claim to asylum here because there's a returns policy apparently even if it is only six weeks old has before he's even crossed the threshold into 10 downing street managed to cause a diplomatic incident over it now right so the fallout from keir starmer's awful bangladesh rhetoric is dog whistle racism targeting bengali communities both here and abroad possibly seen as a tactic for political gain a vote winning race card being played perhaps of dominated this last week leading up to polling day this coming thursday and also have covered in recent videos the consequences of that for labor as they've been coming up the hurt caused by the words of starmer himself and his shadow paymaster general jonathan ashworth the anger the upset here in this country and actually one other aspect of this i've not covered is of all parties to capitalize on someone else being racist the tories have now jumped on this starmer giving them ammo which is Perverse in the extreme, I'm sure you agree, but never let it be said a Tory won't shamelessly exploit an opportunity over literally anything, as James, not very cleverly, perhaps soon to be James, not so much MP anymore for Braintree, put out a statement saying, It was not appropriate for Keir Starmer to single out Bangladesh when only 0.03% of those arriving in the UK on small boats come from there. Keir Starmer knows he cannot do deals with ayatollahs in iran or the taliban in afghanistan countries where most illegal migrants actually come from we will put illegal migrants on planes to rwanda what would keir starmer do about illegal migrants that are already here well not to defend starmer particularly but there is no such thing as illegal migrants jimmy as you well know once here anyone can claim asylum without being punished over how they got here it is why people are prepared to use small boats because whether there is a legal safe asylum route or not and there isn't, how people get here does not matter. That you force people to risk their lives and often lose them still when a legal route would put the people traffickers out to business overnight and nobody would lose their lives trying to get here anymore is fully on you and your rancid party. And if you don't know where the illegal migrants as you keep calling them are now, James, perhaps you should stop losing track of them because that is, after all, on your party and not Labour. At least not yet. Starmer is talked of sending people back to where they come from. Rwanda is an expensive soundbite. No planes will ever get off the ground. It was always a farce and will soon be scrapped when the Tories get dumped out of power. But there was some elements of truth in that statement. The Bengali stats as far as numbers of Bangladeshis who come here by a small boat and the fact Starmer would not be able to send people back to Iran or Afghanistan who we actually have an asylum deal with Afghanistan after the Afghan war ended after all for all the people that helped us in that though in practice that only means under the Tory government that we keep those who managed to get here by the small boat and this does somewhat expose the fact that certainly I've not seen Starmer or other Labour figures differentiate between what they also refer to as illegal migrants and those seeking asylum perfectly legitimately. Labour have in a lot of ways been as dishonest as the Tories on the issue of migration therefore. Back to Bangladesh. Whilst the Tories make a bit of hay while the sun shines over, it won't get them very far because they are, electorally speaking, toast. But Starmer has, it seems, triggered a bit of a diplomatic bulls up right now over his comments because, as you can imagine, Bangladesh and those representatives of Bangladesh in this country might well be rather incensed by his racist comments, singling their people out for no good reason at all and the consequences abroad and here as well perhaps we've not given a lot of thought to. Starmer certainly didn't appear to. However, it does appear to have caused a bit of a diplomatic incident, with the Bangladeshi High Commissioner to the UK, no less, writing to Starmer, a copy of which was leaked to the media via political correspondent for ITV, Shiab Khan, himself British Bengali, part of which reads, 
Amidst your very busy campaign schedule, I'm right today to draw your attention to a sensitive and important matter that cropped up at your interview at the Sun's election showdown on the 24th of June 2024. Well, you mentioned in response to a query regarding the Rwanda Act on Asylum and Immigration that people, illegal migrants, from countries such as Bangladesh aren't being removed to their home nations under the Tories. Since then, I have been approached by a good number of eminent leaders of the Bangladeshi diaspora in the UK, who have not only been saddened by your comments, but also raised concerns about the future of the diaspora community in the UK. Let me take this opportunity as High Commissioner of Bangladesh to the UK in bridging any information gap that may have created this confusion. As per the UK Home Office report, Official Statistics of Irregular Migration to the UK, published in May of 2024, Bangladesh was never in the list of top 20 countries with highest numbers of small boat arrivals. And as per our information, Bangladeshis only ever enter the UK with a valid visa through legal channels. You will also be glad to learn that the Bangladesh High Commission London, responsible for returns of Bangladeshi overstayers in the UK, enjoys a brilliant record of timely and orderly returns with the UK Home Office Returns Team that testified during their recently concluded first meeting of the Bangladeshi-UK Home Office Joint Working Group that not a single case of returns remains pending to date. Oh dear Keith, oh no! So that loudly squealed comment you made in that Sun interview, scum interview if you prefer, I know I do, when you loudly proclaimed that people from Bangladesh aren't being sent home, actually they very much are. As a demographic, their High Commission ensures that people and their legal status to be in this country appears to be very well policed. And I have to say, I love the way that statement reads. It is very polite. Matter of fact, it still comes across as a teacher schooling an ignorant child. And somehow I feel that would get under Starmer's skin more than being yelled at, frankly. Keir Starmer has opined on the matter of Bangladesh and been found to be ignorant as sin, begging the question if he knew so little about the situation with Bangladeshi migration specifically, why did he single them out? And more and more it lends itself to the belief by some, and as I wrote about recently, that this was a calculated exercise in winning votes from the far right, those who like to see their politicians bashing migrants, Starmer betting on not losing too many votes from the Bengali community over this, assuming an apparently poor grasp of the English language amongst older members of the community, as was inferred by Workers' Party candidate Ellie McCann, who habitually vote Labour as a demographic, that this won't lose Labour those votes, but has backfired spectacularly, as it appears this is exactly what has happened. And lending credence to the thinking we've seen Starmer going on UK Bengali news outlets to be interviewed and also trying to make a show of inclusion by attending a service at a Hindu temple, despite 90% of Bengalis being Muslim. But as I've said before, I can imagine there probably aren't too many mosques keen to let Starmer use them for his own political ends anymore. Both Keir Starmer and Jonathan Ashworth demonstrating this was coordinated, attacking a particular minority for their own ends, and they picked one they really shouldn't have done if they knew better, if they were better informed. Because what this has done there is point out the willingness for Labour politicians under Starmer, when we already expect this from the Tories, but showing Labour are no different from them when it comes to migration, racism, and especially on this, is to show a preparedness to single out one ethnic group or another to blame for the way things are in this country, to scapegoat them, as many have been over the years, the whole taking our jobs, taking our housing mantra. When it isn't people coming here, however they make their way here today from other countries, that is doing that because the problems have lasted far longer than these people have been here. Governments we keep electing are the causes of these issues. The social contract, rights at work, the work-life balance, lack of housing have been historic issues not addressed by repeated governments benefiting those that bought up all the housing, treating houses not as homes but as investments, the bosses who suppress wages and impact upon our physical and mental health with having to work several jobs just to make ends meet when we should only ever need one. Any politician blaming minorities for that is a politician who has absolutely no intention of addressing the actual underlying issues, but serve those benefiting from them. And Keir Starmer has just put a big neon sign above his head with the rhetoric, this Theresa May old soundbite blasting out that nothing will change, despite Starmer having the barefaced nerve to use the word change as his literal election motto. He's going to be elected to power on a one word campaign slogan that will be his biggest lie ever. And there are so many other lies to choose from. That really is saying something. Nothing will change with Labour in charge, with Starmer leading the country, right down to the belief you're getting the Tories out, 
when Starmer is simply saying all of the same things they do. The one thing he still can't bring himself to say, though, is sorry. That one little word and the lack of its utterance from his face hole is causing ongoing damage amongst Bengali communities, Muslim communities and more. And those are votes he's set to lose or has already lost. Just saying sorry goes a long way. The word exists for a reason. Admit you got this wrong. What you did was wrong and move on because until you do, you deserve every single lost vote your actions have caused. Get an idea of the scale of that in this video recommendation here and I'll hopefully catch you on the next vid. Cheers folks.